called Sean Colgan, our American friend here in the commentary box earlier during the lunch break. He said this was the race that he was looking forward to most this afternoon, the Temple Challenge Cup, the University of Washington, United States of America against the home favourites, Oxford Brooks University A. I mean, this is a huge entry event. 22 crews didn't even qualify for this event. It's absolutely stacked. It's the men's student eights race, and this is going to be a hot, hot contest. So here we're looking at the University of Washington, an amazing program here. This is a combination of athletes from the first, second and third varsity eights. Uh, and they, it was a real big deal, I think, for them. Sarah beating Yale yesterday, so really pleased to be here. A load of class in this boat looking there at the bow man. Alexander Volmer, junior world champion in the eight, junior world's bronze uh, in 2015. And the under 23 world championships crew as well in the pair. Uh, junior world champion uh, at two, national champion in the middle, junior world champion in, uh, for Canada in the sixth seat. And now we swing across and look at the Oxford Bro Brooks University uh, A crew from this event. A big deal for, the, for them yesterday beating New Newcastle, who they'd lost to previously. They're the kids of the Oxford Brooks University program, uh, but they'll be Here looking to Get emulate uh, the other crews that Brooks have produced here. Um, the oldest guy in the boat, uh, 24 years of old, Ben uh, Whitting, oldest by a few years, the rest of them 19, uh, 20, setting out on their senior rowing careers. Yep. As we sit here, it's the calm before the storm. When I see that you are both straight and ready, I will start you like this. You know, I was at the start earlier and I hate this moment. It really yeah. makes you nervous. And you see the athletes sometimes you know, tapping their legs, banging their legs. They come forward and they just want the race to be underway. You just don't want to be sitting here. You want the cox's hand to go down. You want to be able to get on with this. Um, and it can be internal. Hands are down. Attention. Go. And they're away. Patient start there from both eights seen a couple of mishaps down the track this afternoon. It is fast, but it is tricky, particularly in these fast-moving boats. You have to be so skillful stepping out of, over the water. It's a little bubbly out there on the water with a bit of breeze and a little bit of boat wash. They've got to be careful here. You can't afford a mishap if you want to stay in this race. Well, that's right. They've got away cleanly. They're side by side as they come through the end of the island. This is where the wind starts to hit you. As we look at Brooks steaming past the end of the island, they'll be looking to do everything they can to stay on terms at this point in the race. Uh, in the Cox's seat there, Gavin McWilliams urging them on. First Henry Regatta for him and uh, looking into the face of Henry Duard Brook. Um, junior Worlds uh, last year in the eight, some experience in his head, and um, he is trying to set up their crew for a good start. But on the far side, I think Washington have taken this race to them. Yeah, they were locked together there, but just in the last few strokes, we've seen Washington start to capitalise. They're holding that start out. You can't afford to get dropped in an eight, and you cannot afford to get dropped in a tailwind condition. It is just too hard to come back from. The boat's too fast. Yeah, we haven't talked enough about that really, because the conditions you'd say, well, if there's a bit of a tailwind, you know, this is going to make them fast. But actually, technically, it's quite tricky to continue to apply the power in the way you need to uh, in, in what's quite a uh, strong tailwind as you come into the second half of the course. That's right, and it's, it's over in a flash. I mean, for these rowers, they'll get to the end in these fast conditions and think, oh my gosh, I, I barely had time to think. So they've really got to make sure that they keep their minds on the job because you don't have the opportunity that you do in flat wind, uh, sorry, in flat water or in a headwind condition to really come back into a race if things have maybe drifted apart. You've got to stay on your game and you've got to stay in the hunt. Yeah, and I think this is something where experience can tell as well. A bit more experience of re racing in varied conditions um, can allow you to uh, capitalise. And I think, you know, at the moment, it does look to me like the, uh, the uh, Washington crew are rowing the conditions rather better. They're just getting hold of it a little bit more quickly out front and capitalising on the full length of the stroke. I think the Brooks crews are struggling maybe in the front end just to pick it up the way they need. You can see how they're being blown around here, Sarah, as they open up uh, and the gusts come in from the side. And this is the trickiest part of the course, and this is where they need to keep their heads. Yeah, it is really swirly. It's really tricky here. We can see a few adjustments there on the rudder from Oxford Brooks. For me, though, University of Washington look like they're just handling things a little bit better through the center of the course here. Their whole aim coming into today was not to really focus on who they were racing, but just to keep things simple, and they seem to be doing that. Yeah, I think uh, Washington riding high after that victory over Yale would really motivate them yesterday, and uh, they it looks like they've got 143 to the barrier, which is one second inside the record. So again, blisteringly fast as umpire Hedger warns the Washington crew. 
Yeah, the Washington crew just a little close over to the centre of the course. They're certainly not impacting on the Oxford Brooks crew, but sometimes some of these coxswains get a little cheeky and try and get out into the centre and just send a bit of dirty water down the way to their competitor. But uh, they still haven't really responded. They're going to have to heed that warning or they might get another one here to stay on their station. Um, this really is question time for the young Brooks crew here. It's the, qu the question is, can we do something? Can we respond? Can we get back on terms? I see the umpire's flag going up just out of shot there as uh, he warns the crew again. And the uh, Washington Cox, Kimmons Wilson there, 21 years old, acknowledges with a hand wave and moves the crew across. That's smart coxing. I think you don't want to be in trouble here. They've got um, the margin just about overlap. And I think Brooks are making a move, which is exactly what they need to do if they're going to have any chance now of making this uh, a successive vic victory. They've won three of the last four of these events. Yeah, this is really interesting. The uh, umpire's still flagging Washington, so even though we saw that the coxswain acknowledged the warning, it did take some time. They've got a record here to Fawley. It is fast, another fast race this afternoon, but I think Washington's looking a little bit tired through the middle section here, and perhaps Oxford Brooks is going to be able to get themselves back on terms. So it's definitely fast conditions. They're three seconds inside the record. The question is, have Washington gone out too fast trying to kill off the Brooks challenge? And certainly, um, credit to Brooks, I really feel that they're um, doing their best to hold the race as we look for from ahead. I think Brooks have now got into conditions that they're a little bit more comfortable with. I think maybe the side breeze was causing some challenge. Um, and look, uh, Washington, I would say the puddles are overlapping. Can you see that? Uh, just giving a bit of dirty water. You think not too tricky, but that's a bit challenging. Yeah, the umpire there flagging once again to Washington to move over here. They're going to have to be careful because if there's an appeal at the end of this race, they might get themselves in a bit of trouble. They need to move back into their station a little bit further over to the right. Looks like they're slowly going there now as the crews start to separate out. But that's maybe given Oxford Brooks a little in here. I it mean, looks like they're up to about a quarter of a length, even a third of a length here. Yeah, I mean, they haven't just got a sniff. They've, they've, they've really taken a big intake of breath as they can sense the Washington crew. And there's something special about feeling that you're moving through a crew fast. The guys in the two-seat, the bow-seat, the three-seat of the Brooks crew now will really be able to see out of the corner of their eye the Washington stern post, the Washington cox, the Washington stroke. And they're going to be yelling down the boat, it's time to go, it's time to go, we've got them. And uh, meanwhile, in Washington, they've just got to push it on and push it on. Yeah, if I was that coxswain over in the Oxford Brooks boat, I would be telling them I've got a seat and you're going to give me another two. I would be telling them that it, this is within grasp. Well, it's kitchen sink time for Oxford Brooks as we look at Alexander Vollmer in the bow seat there. Washington have still got the lead. They've still got the position. Looks to me like they're tiring a little bit, but now they're being lifted by the crowd. As they come past the stewards' enclosure, uh, enclosure here at Henley Royal Regatta, they're looking strong, and Brooks are pushing, and Brooks are pushing. A big answer there, though, from Udar, but looks like they've pushed themselves back out. They've countered that move from Oxford Brooks. It's too little, too late from Oxford Brooks. It will be the University of Washington from the United States of America coming across the line in about a length ahead. Elation for Washington, devastation for Brooks in the moment of crossing the line there. Washington came to Henley and they took the scouts of Brooks who so often won the Temple Challenge Cup, stacked full of student talent all the way through the competition. And Sean Colgan said he was looking forward to this because it was the American crew, so he'll be very happy there, I'm sure, to see them get the job done. Well, just look at that moment of victory from Washington. This, this is why we rose, Sarah. The record by five seconds, 5.58. Wow, what an incredible result there. I mean, the speed they must have had in the second half of that race to do that because they were not that far under earlier. I think, I mean, I think Brooks did them a favour there by pushing and pushing and pushing. They really had to respond and uh, they really laid it down on the track. This is a Henley we're going to remember so for a huge time to come. These records will be uh, standing, I think, for quite a long time. What an afternoon of racing here at Henley Royal Regatta. See a replay there from the start. Clean start from both crews. Fast but tricky conditions. Just needing to stay composed all the way down the track here. And it almost means, if you can do that, that a record is yours this afternoon.